Ransomware attacks, what are the worst? Ransomware is a threat that has been hanging over businesses and individuals since the mid-2000s. In 2017, the FBI's Internet Crime Complaint Center, IC3, received 1.783 ransomware complaints that cost victims over $2.3 million. These complaints, however, only represent attacks reported to IC3. The actual number of ransomware attacks and costs are much higher, around 184 million ransomware attacks occurred just last year. The ransomware's original intent was to target individuals, who still make up the majority of attacks today. This article will look at the history of ransomware from its first documented attack in 1989 to the present day. We will show you in detail some of the most significant attacks and ransomware variants. Finally, we'll take a look at future evolution and ransomware solutions. What is ransomware? Understanding what ransomware is is very simple, we are talking about a type of malicious software that takes over files or systems and blocks users from accessing them. All files, or even entire devices, are held hostage using encryption until the victim pays a ransom in exchange for the decryption key. Although ransomware has been around for decades, its variants have become increasingly advanced in their abilities to spread, evade detection, encrypt files, and force users to pay the ransom. This means that ransomware attacks have become more dangerous and damaging to victims. How Ransomware Attacks Work Now that we have a rough definition of ransomware, let's move on to a more detailed account of how these malicious programs gain access to a company's files and systems. The term ransomware describes the software's function, which is to extort users or companies for profit. However, the program must gain access to the files or system it will hold hostage, and this access takes an place through infection, infection is the means by which the ransomware gains access. Examples of vector types include Email attachments, a commonly used method to deceive users involves inserting a malicious attachment within an email disguised as urgent. Messages, this includes both instant messaging systems and chats related to social networks. One of the most important channels used in this approach is, in fact, Facebook Messenger. Pop-ups. Pop-ups are created to mimic the software currently in use on the victim's device so that the victim feels comfortable following the instructions which, in the end, will harm the user. The first ransomware attack. Although ransomware has maintained preeminence as a major threat since 2005, the first attacks occurred much earlier. According to Becker's Hospital Review, the first known ransomware attack occurred in 1989 and targeted the healthcare industry. Thirty years later, the healthcare sector remains a major target of ransomware attacks. The first attack was launched in 1989 by Joseph Pop, an AIDS researcher, who initiated the attack by distributing 20,000 floppy disks to other AIDS researchers in more than 90 countries, claiming that the disks contained a program that analyzed, through a questionnaire, the risk for an individual of contracting AIDS. However, the disk also contained a malware program that would have been activated only after turning on the computer 90 times. Upon reaching the 90th, the malware displayed a message requesting a payment of $189 and an additional $378 for the software rental. This ransomware attack became known as the AIDS Trojan or PC. This software. first ransomware attack was, to be polite, rudimentary and reports indicated had flaws. Nonetheless, it laid the foundation for the evolution of ransomware in the sophisticated attacks taking place today. According to Fast Company, the first developed ransomware players used to write their own encryption code themselves. On the other hand, today's attackers are increasingly relying on ready-to-use libraries that are significantly harder to crack and are leveraging more sophisticated delivery methods such as spear phishing campaigns rather than traditional phishing emails, which are often filtered by today's spam filters. Besides, some more sophisticated attackers are developing toolkits that can be downloaded and implemented by attackers with less technical skills. Meanwhile, some of the most advanced cybercriminals are monetizing ransomware by offering ransomware as a service programs, which has led to the growth of well-known ransomware such as CryptoLocker, CryptoWall, Locky, and Tesla Crypt. These are some examples of common types of advanced malware. CryptoWall alone has generated over $320 million in revenue. After the first documented ransomware attack in 1989, this type of cybercrime remained rare until the mid-2000s, when attacks started using more sophisticated and harder-to-crack encryption algorithms such as RSA encryption. Popular during this time were code, Troy.Ransom.A, Archivus, Croton, Cryzip, and May Archive. In 2011, 
a worm ransomware mimicked the Windows product activation warning, making it harder for users to distinguish between genuine notifications and threats. Kaspersky's Secure List reports that from April 2014 to March 2015, the most prominent ransomware threats were CryptoWall, Creacle, Scatter, More, CTB Locker, Torrent Locker, Between Fury, Lore Attack 101,568 users around the world, accounting for 77.48% of all users attacked with crypto ransomware during the period, states the report. In just one year, the landscape has changed significantly. According to Kaspersky 2015 to 2016 research, Tesla Crypt, together with CTB Locker, Scatter and Kriokla were responsible for attacks against 79.21% of those who encountered any crypto ransomware. The biggest ransomware attacks and the most prominent variants. Considering the advancement of ransomware, it is not surprising that the largest ransomware attacks have occurred in recent years. Simultaneously, ransom demands also increased. Reports indicate that. In the mid-2000s, requests were averaging around $300, while today they are close to $500. Usually, there is a specific deadline for the ransom by which the ransom note doubles or it is no longer possible to access the files because they are destroyed or permanently blocked. CryptoLocker was one of the most profitable ransomware of its time, between September and December 2013, it infected more than 250,000 systems earning more than $3 million before being coded in 2014 via an international operation. Later, its encryption model was analyzed and now an online tool is available to recover encrypted files compromised by crypto locker. Unfortunately, the demise of crypto locker only led to the emergence of several imitation ransomware variants, including the commonly known crypto wall and torrent locker clones. Game Over Zeus itself re-emerged in 2014 in the form of an evolved campaign sending out malicious spam messages. Since that time, there has been a steady rise in the number of variants and attacks, with high-level primary targets in the April banking, healthcare and early 2016. Crypto Wall was among the most commonly used ransomware varieties, with several variants targeting hundreds of thousands of individuals and companies. In mid-2015, Crypto Wall had extorted over $18 million from victims, prompting the FBI to warn users of the threat. In 2015, a variety of ransomware known as Tesla Crypt or Alpha Crypt damaged 163 victims, earning attackers $76.522. Tesla Crypt usually requested redemptions in Bitcoin, although PayPal or My Cash cards were used in some cases, with amounts ranging from $150 to $1.000. Also in 2015, a group known as the Armada Collective carried out a series of attacks on Greek banks. Instead of paying for it, the banks increased their defenses and avoided further interruptions of the service, despite Armada's subsequent attempts. For attacks on larger corporations, ransoms are estimated to reach $50.000. However, a ransomware attack last year against a Los Angeles hospital system, the Hollywood Presbyterian Medical Center HPMC, would have demanded a ransom of $3.4 million. The attack forced the hospital back into the pre-IT era blocking access to the corporate network, email and critical patient data for 10 days. An update from HPMC indicates that initial reports of a $3.4 million ransom note were inaccurate and that the hospital paid the required $17.000, or 40 bitcoins at the time, to restore operations so fastly and efficiently. A little over a week later, the Los Angeles County Department of Health Services was infected with a program that blocked the organization's access to its data, however, the agency successfully isolated the infected devices. Ottawa Hospital was hit with ransomware affecting more than 9,800 machines, but the hospital responded by wiping the drives. Thanks to diligent backup and recovery processes, the hospital could beat the attackers at their own game and avoid paying the ransom. In the same month, several other California hospitals were hit by a ransomware renamed Locky, for the Locky extension it applied to encrypted files, but none of them paid the ransom. March 2016 also saw the appearance of the Petya ransomware variant. Petya is an advanced ransomware that encrypts a computer's master file table and replaces the master boot record with a ransom note, rendering the computer unusable unless the ransom is paid. In May, it further evolved to include direct file encryption capabilities. Petya was also among the first ransomware variants to be included as part of a ransomware as a service operation. In a May 2016 article, ZDNet reported, According to detections by Kaspersky Lab researchers, the top three ransomware families during the first quarter of the year were, 
Tesla Crypt, 58.4%, CTB Locker, 23.5%, and CryptoWall, 3.4%. All three of these mainly infected users through spam emails with malicious attachments or links to infected web pages. By mid-2016, Locky had solidified its place as one of the most commonly used ransomware varieties, with Fishme Research reporting that Locky's use had overtaken Crypto Wall as early as February 2016. During Black Friday, November 25, of 2016, the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency was the victim of a ransomware attack that disrupted train ticketing and bus management systems. The attackers demanded a whopping 100 Bitcoin ransom equivalent to around $73.000 at the time, but thanks to the quick response and full backup processes, Sfinta was able to, to restore ransom. its system. The company had to bear the costs of unsold tickets as passengers could travel without paying fares during the two days that the systems were inactive. The ransomware used in the attack might have been Mamba or Cryptor. In 2016, also emerged one of the first ransomware variants to target Apple OS X. K-Ranger mainly affected users using the transmission application, but it affected around 6,500 computers in a day and a half, after which it was quickly removed. As you can see, 2016 was a big year for ransomware attacks, with reports from early 2017 estimated that the ransomware rewarded cybercriminals for a total of $1 billion. The Future of Ransomware These incidents are catapulting ransomware into a new era in which cybercriminals can easily replicate small-scale attacks while targeting much larger companies to demand large ransoms from. While some victims can mitigate attacks and restore their files or systems without paying a ransom, even a small percentage of attacks are enough to produce substantial revenue and incentives for cybercriminals. As we have said several times in our articles, it is important to reiterate that paying the ransom does not guarantee access to your files. The best solution is to remove the ransomware and decrypt files without paying the ransom. CryptoLocker ransomware extorted $3 million from users but did not decrypt the files of everyone who paid, CNET reports based on the results of a security ledger article. A data survey found that in one quarter of incidents in which ransom was paid, attackers avoided unlocking victim data. Incidentally, ransomware operations continue to find more creative ways to monetize their efforts. As was the Petty and Cerber ransomware that pioneered ransomware, ransomware authors and operators also drives rapid innovation and fierce competition among cybercriminals. Petty Rap ransomware, for example, was built using cracked code from Petty. For the victims, knowing where the code comes from does not matter, whether you have been infected with Petty or Petty Rap, the result is the same, your files are encrypted with such a powerful algorithm that no decryption tools currently exist. What are the prospects for ransomware? A new report from the National Cybersecurity Center, NCSC, and the UK's National Crime Agency, NCA, warns of developing threats such as ransomware as a service and mobile ransomware. The pace at which the IoT is growing, combined with IoT devices widely reported in security, provides a whole new frontier for ransomware operators. Best practices for ransomware protection, such as regular backups and software updates don't apply to most connected devices, and many IoT vendors are slow or just plain careless when it comes to releasing software patches. Now, as businesses increasingly rely on IoT devices to perform operations, there could be a spike in ransomware attacks on these types of devices. Critical infrastructure represents another worrying target for future ransomware attacks, DHS Business Performance Management Office Director Neil Jenkins warned at the 2017 RSA conference that water services and similar infrastructure could be attractive targets for attackers. Jenkins referred to a January 2017 ransomware attack that temporarily disabled components of an Austrian hotel keycard system as a potential predecessor for more significant infrastructure attacks to come. How to Protect Yourself from Ransomware Attacks there are some steps that end users and businesses can take to reduce the risk of falling victim to practices any business must follow. 1. Frequent and verified backups. Backing up all files and systems is one of the most powerful defenses against ransomware. All data can be restored to a previous save point. Backup files must be verified to ensure that the data is complete and undamaged. 2. Structured and regular updates. The software creator regularly updates most software used by companies. These updates may include patches to make the software safer against known threats. Every company should designate an employee to update the software, but the fewer people are involved in updating the system, the fewer potential attack vectors there are for criminals. 3. 
Reasonable restrictions, certain restrictions should apply to those who work with devices that contain company files, documents and or programs. Use devices connected to corporate networks that could be made vulnerable. Are third party or temporary workers. 4. Proper credential monitoring, any employee, contractor, and person who is granted access to systems create a potential point of vulnerability for ransomware. Replacement or failure to update passwords and improper restrictions can lead to even greater chances of attack. While these practices are fairly well known, many people fail to back up their data regularly, and some companies only do so within their own networks, which means that a single ransomware attack can compromise all backups. Effective defense against ransomware largely depends on proper education. Users and businesses should take the time to learn about the best options for automatic data backup and software updates. Educating employees about the telltale signs of ransomware distribution tactics, such as phishing attacks, drive-by downloads, and spoofed websites, should be a top priority for anyone security solutions that enable advanced threat protection. In any case, if you have been damaged by ransomware, do not despair, avoid doing it yourself and contact qualified specialists like those of Help Ransomware, who will be able to solve your problem with the best solution.